Well, good day. So it's still the Olympics going on. So let's talk about oh, I don't, uh, Silver Surfer. Like, why not, right? The episode in question does kind of have a Olympic event kind of theme. I don't know, maybe? So maybe, you know, let's just recap that episode and see if I'm right, and then we'll talk about some more things after. So, all right, let's go. All right. So we got our buddy Silver Surfer looking around the universe for his home planet, Zandla. It was hidden from him, and he's been searching for it ever since. He's going to a planet named Harmony because he knows that there is Zendla technology on there called the Dreamweaver, and hopefully that can kind of help him locate where Zendla has been placed. But on his way there, he's noticing there's this jerk named Thanos who is totally causing suns to go supernova, which obviously destroys all the planets in his solar system. Thanos is doing that because there are planets in the solar system that he believes has wronged him in the past, and also to impress his lover, Lady Chaos, who is entrapped in stone. Basically, it's like whipping out the intergalactic measuring tape. Silver Surfer realizes, holy crap, dude is on his way to Harmony. I have to get there before he doesn't warn them and so he does kind of the people who live on harmony called the winham they have been using the dream weaver to live in this false reality the planet is actually really dilapidated but in the fantasy reality man it's like beautiful like the architecture is amazing everybody is like full of muscles and courage and pride all they ever do is get constant glory by playing in these gladiatorial type games. Kind of like the endless Olympics of one event. But Surf realizes this is what the people chose to do. This, they, they weren't trapped into this. They want to be in this false reality. So he turns off the Dreamweaver, but there's just so much pain and anguish that the people can't take it. They don't want to be reminded of how horrible their conditions really are. It's kind of like in that movie Train Spotting when Ewan McGregor's character was like coming off a of heroin and he's just flipping out, man. Kind of like that, but in a cartoon for kids and you don't see any babies crawling on ceilings. So Surfer's like, okay, I just can't cut these guys off cold turkey. I'm going to have to enter their fantasy world and kind of try to convince the man that Thanos is on the way. Surfer enters the Dreamweaver fantasy. He meets Meets up with Beta Ray Bill and has a quick little tussle with them because everyone thinks that the Silver Surfer isn't real. No, 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 he is quite real. He finally convinces them that he's real and that he has urgent news, but he totally forgets what the news is because he's succumbing to the power of the Dreamweaver. And he's just like, oh man, I want to fight in your Olympics here and get all this glory. But he eventually breaks free from the fantasy and convinces Beta Ray Bill to do the same. Or tries to anyway. Beta Ray Bill is like, no man, like that's Zuber said earlier in this, we chose this fantasy. We don't want to be reminded how horrible things are for us. These games, as fake as they are, they give us purpose. They give us pride and happiness. But eventually he realizes, okay, well, if Thanos is here to destroy us because he's a jerk. Dick, you're absolutely right. I have to get out of his dream and we got to figure something out. So what do they figure out? Well, all of the technology that they had on Harmony has been used to power the Dreamweaver. So they realize, man, if Thanos is in orbit or like right now, let's just point the Dreamweaver at him, make him believe he destroyed his planet, and for good measure, make him believe that his girlfriend Lady Chaos is no longer trapped in stone. Maybe he can get his rocks off with her now. <laughs> so a little happy ending for Thanos. So he's all satisfied and he pisses off and the planet is saved. But not the Dreamweaver because it couldn't handle the power amplification from Silver Surfer's power cosmic and totally got destroyed. So all the Winham people are forced to live in reality in their dilapidated planet and kind of rebuild. And Silver Surfer couldn't use the Dreamweaver you know, to try to find Zen La. So he's back at square one flying around the cosmos. And well, that's just how it goes for him. And uh, that is the end of our fantastic little story. <laughs> Man, do I love that series. I can't believe it only lasted one season. Or maybe I can believe it lasted one season. 
a lot of the superhero shows at the time that were cartoons for kids, you know, that were going on, were a lot more action-based and had a lot more kind of things going on in it. The Silver Surfer show had a whole lot of internal monologue where the Silver Surfer was just contemplating a lot of things that were heavy on his mind, and that's a lot of the episode. Some action hither dither, but really was kind of different from all the other ones, and maybe that's what the appeal to me was. Just the whole tone of it, I don't know what it was, it was just so awesome. Like the artwork itself was like basically styled after the legendary Jack Kirby, and it looked like just so amazing. And it really pisses me off that this is one of the shows that I watched that only had one season that had a cliffhanger ending for the season finale and we never got that result. <sighs> but I digress. So this episode was just a total beaut. And it doesn't really take a whole lot to consider that this episode is really all about just drug use, really. Like the Winham who have chosen to be stuck in this Dreamweaver fantasy world. That's like choosing to be on some mind-altering drug and being stuck in that fantasy, really. And if you try to come off it too quick, you're just going to be totally stressed out, just like they were in the episode. If it's Olympic time and I'm trying to give this a bit of an Olympic slant, you could say, well, that's kind of like steroids to kind of give you a false, really, sense of where you are athletically. And you don't want to really get off that easy because you're reaching these higher heights that you didn't think you could reach before. Right? Kinda. And that is like a false reality, right? So yeah, we're not that far off base. So for me personally, I love this episode. I love this series. You know, I do encourage people to watch it, but I can totally dig if it's really not your cup of tea because it is so different compared to the other Marvel cartoons of the time. So I shall give this two silver thumbs up and uh, yeah. So let's go see what else we can find out about this. Okay, so let's start off with the history of the Silver Surfer. He made his first appearance in Fantastic Four number 48 in 1966 when he was the Herald of Galactus seeking out planets to destroy for Galactus' consumption. And he also helped the Galactus not destroying Earth. And Galactus did free him of his Herald duties, but also banished him to just Earth. And that part of his story started getting flushed out in Silver Surfer number one in 1968 and moving forward from there. So we learn about his past. His real name is Norrin Rad. He comes from the planet Zen La. And in order to save his planet from Galactus, he agreed to become Galactus's herald and became the Silver Surfer with the Power Cosmic. In television, we didn't see a whole lot of Silver Surfer. He made his TV debut in the 1967 Fantastic Four cartoon, episode 15, entitled Galactus, which was just a replay of the comic book. Of course, he had this one season in this series that I just kind of featured. Surfer did show up in a couple other cartoons like Superhero Squad, Hulk Agents of Smash, and of course made his live action debut in 2007's Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer with his best buddy Galactus who was a cloud in this one. And I'm so torn with that because I can understand why they did that, but at the same time, why did they do that? For the other main characters in this one, Beta Ray Bill, his first appearance was in The Mighty Thor number 337, and that was in 1983. Three. He's one of the very few characters who can lift Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, and was gifted his own hammer called Stormbreaker. You didn't see him too much. This featured episode was his television debut. He also cameoed in Superhero Squad and Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. So for the villain of the episode, Thanos. His first appearance was in The Invincible Iron Man number 55 in 1973, which was pretty cool. This episode did kind of feature a lot of his proper comic origins. And of course, uh, if you didn't know, he made a pretty big splash in the MCU. So we did see quite a bit of him. So how does this stuff compare to the MCU? Well, well, you have Thanos. Um, Of course, in the comic books, Thanos did everything to impress Lady Death with the Infinity Gauntlet and all. In this cartoon, he's doing everything to impress Lady Chaos. Basically the same character, but not so doomy and gloomy, you know, for the kids. And in the MCU, he's doing everything uh, for balance. Of course, Beta Ray Bill is featured in this cartoon. And we've seen a kind of a tribute glimpse of Beta Ray Bill on the tower in Thor Ragnarok. As one of the champions alongside the Hulk, he's expected to make his MCU debut in Thor Love and Thunder. So as I did mention earlier, Beta Ray Bill's hammer 
was called Stormbreaker, and in the MCU, Thor did get a new weapon called Stormbreaker, but not quite the same thing. We'll see if Beta Ray Bill gets to hold that puppy. Other than that, like, that's kind of our similarities with the MCU. Like, who knows if we're gonna see the Silver Surfer in the MCU, right? The Fantastic Four is gonna make their fantastic debut in the not too distant future, and with the Silver Surfer always being kind of linked with them, yeah, maybe we will, but I guess we'll have to see. And uh, other than that, uh, that's that. Right on, and there you go. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it as much as I did making it. Also, feel free to check out the source material that I featured in this video. And if you want to leave a comment on anything you may have liked or things I might have missed in this, you know, feel free to do so. Or anything else, you know, just to say hi. That's cool too. And other than that, you know, uh, have a great day. Thanks.